What if? Let me assert my firm belief. What if? That the only thing we have to fear is... We looked at things. Fear itself. Differently. I'm feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Differently. Differently? Differently. Hello, you are listening to That's Life, stories and lessons that might make you think differently. I'm Heather, and welcome to part three of the series that we've been running the last few weeks called Should I Stay or Should I Go? And um, if you're just joining us uh, for this first one, this is your first time joining us, I really encourage you to go back and listen to parts one and two. Um, just really good conversation and kind of build on, on each one here. But I mean, we've covered everything. Um, so anyway, rewind some background here. I invited my two friends, Delaney and Crystal, to participate in this discussion because each one brings a different perspective to uh, the, the concept of parenting. And so Delaney, after having kids, decided to go back to work full time as a teacher. Crystal, uh, with her four kids, decided to take on a more flexible work environment where she actually uh, started running her own business out of, out of the home and so did not re-enter a traditional workforce. And the, the inception and the inspiration for this series, um, which was originally supposed to be just one episode, but turned into a series of episodes here, um, was because my, through conversations with uh, many friends and just acquaintances, just really struggling with that decision. And then once they made the decision to either stay at home with their children or go back to work, um, then, then still continuing to have that battle with themselves. Did I make the right decision? And this, this was just really interesting to me. Um, and so I wanted to talk about it because I figured, hey, this is something that is probably um, more, more people go through and maybe don't always feel comfortable talking about it. Um, and, and don't feel like they have the support system to talk about it, or maybe they have feelings that are happening that they don't want to really say out loud uh, because they all feel guilty about that. So um, that's the, that was the background uh, for, these, for these episodes, and we have just talked about so much, covered a lot of ground here, talked about everything from you know shifting our own expectations on what it means to stay at home and what it means to go to work um, also you know talking about uh, just really accepting the season that we're in and not accepting the season that we're in and not taking that as the final um, so that it was in part one crystal really talked about her life in chapters and saying this is a chapter of her life and so in particular um, you know she went to college and got a degree in something completely different from what she's doing now uh, does she still have aspirations to do that not necessarily but does she still have some aspirations to um, do something and, and apply her degree certainly uh, so we talked about um, you know, doing that, and and me as the as the friend, you know, really talking about softening my heart and and not um, judging, and and I I said this in one of the episodes that I had been really subconsciously judging my own friends who decided to stay at home, um, and not I guess. I, well, judgment is judgment, but um, so not to justify it, but at the same time, it really I, what I what I was judging here was saying, "Hey, I want more for you. You know, you you got a degree, or you know, you really wanted to pursue this dream. Don't don't stop. You know, keep going. So uh, really having a healthy discussion around that and saying this wasn't." This wasn't something that they were forced to do. Uh, this is a choice, but also 
this isn't it, you know? So while I was sitting back here saying, thinking like, well, this is it. They're never going to get to do this again. That's not the case. Um, we also talked about, you know, really what that conversation looks like with your significant other um, and, and sitting down and deciding how are you going to make this unit work between um, the two of you and then the kids entering in. Um, you know, what, what does this new lifestyle really look like for the two of you? Um, in last episode, we talked about the challenges of working out of the home. Um, really being able to separate your professional life from your personal life. So Crystal, I thought it was cute, you know, talked about, uh, you know, blocking the time to, to mom and using it as a verb, you know, this is my time to mom, this is my time to work. And really that works for her because she, because of working in the home and she needs that, that separation. Um, but also, you know, finding true, you know, not just the balance between this is professional, this is my work, this is my home life, but finding that balance for self-care. So we talked a little bit about that with Delaney as well. And really, um, most of the time, that is the first thing that goes. That's the first thing that suffers is that focus on yourself because you're juggling a whole lot of other things. Um, but really making sure that you're still dedicating that time to growing yourself spiritually, emotionally, physically um, in a healthy way. And then, you know, we talked about some, some interesting topics around, uh, you know, kids, the favoritism there that they may play, start to play with parents. How do you navig navigate that? Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a really fun conversation and in this final episode, um, we're going to talk about this topic of mom guilt that, uh, we, it's kind of a comical thing to me. I know it's out there. I see it happening, but every time I say the phrase mom guilt, I just smile because I think of the movie bad moms. Um, and, and it, I mean, there's just this shaming, I think, that happens that is completely unnecessary. We're going to talk about that, and then Crystal and Delaney are going to share some final words of advice. So here we go. Enjoy. Do you guys, um, have you heard of the phrase mom guilt? Are you guys oh, familiar yeah. with this? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because I feel like this is something that's like trending, you know, it like and ha and it's just I hear more and more about it. Um, and so, you know, my understanding of mom guilt is that um, any any time that you are doing something else in life that takes you away from focusing solely on your kids, is that your understanding as well? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So it's like, you know, it's kind of when, like if mom goes out with her girlfriends on the weekend or something, it's, you know, she's doing that instead of choosing to be at home with her kids. Or I guess, you know, I don't really hear too much about it when there's like a date night or something like that. But, or if, you know, mom goes on a girl's trip or anything, anything along those lines. And so um, I'm just curious, like, if either of you have ever had those moments where you've experienced mom guilt, where you're like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be at home with my kids right now. I think mildly at times. Yeah. You know, I, get, I mean, and sometimes it's as silly as like I took a bar class and I could be at home having breakfast on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um just like you said, you know, I work and so I'm out of the home Monday through Friday. I don't get to have breakfast. As, you know, our breakfast is very quick in the morning. And so like some days, yeah, I'm like, oh God, you know, and it's, it's not like lingering for me. It's, it's definitely, you know, but some, yeah, I definitely, you know, how do you or deal like, with or that? Or like then? you said about, or you said, like you said about like going out on a girl's night, like, and I don't know if mom guilt, cause mom guilt, like I also feel that little ping, if you will, like, going out with my girlfriends and being like oh should I have gone out on a date with Dan instead you know but mm -hmm. I need to see my girlfriends like again that's one of those like things that like fills me up and makes me a good me um and so so yeah like but but then at the at the also that little ping of like uh-oh 
you know. Yeah, like I should, I should, you know, and um, I've read all these <laughs> books lately about like eliminating should from your vocabulary. I was just going to is... say, right, but like, do I need, should, like, do I need to be spending, you know, do, did, did my marriage need that? time did me and my husband need you mm-hmm. know that that dinner date instead of me going out with my girlfriends on Saturday yeah so you how know, are or, you or, how do you how do you kind of I guess deal with that um I mean do you do you make changes then or do you just kind of have that moment and then you're like no like this is okay because this is what I need right now or what do you do I think that I think I wish I could I wish I could say that I needed to make changes, but I don't do any of it enough. Um, I'm you know, I wish I was I, I wish I had the stamina to go out every weekend with my girlfriend. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't you lose you lose um, that at thirty. <laughs> right. So I think that I, you know, I have my little ping, but then I remind myself again, like that I don't do enough self care. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, for me to be a good wife and for me to be a good mom, I need to feel sexy. So I need to go to bar so I can feel Mm -hmm. good about myself. You know, I need to go and have conversations with my girlfriends so that I can vent to them about my husband. So that when I go (laughs) home, I realize, oh, he's not, he's not the only husband that is, or boyfriend, you know, that is weird. Um, Right. Or vent very publicly on a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I mean, so yeah, you know, I think that I, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about I, you, it, Crystal? It, I, I'm sorry, Dee. No, it's okay. <laughs> Are you sure? I want to make sure you get it all out. No, I was just saying, I just think I, I think I let it ping. And then I, I remind myself that it's okay to take care of myself and it's okay to be, yes, to be selfish. Um, every now and again, you know what I mean? Cause it ultimately, again, it's gonna, it's gonna make me balanced. So yeah. hundred percent. Crystal, what about you? I mean, do you experience mom guilt at all? You know, I think I've had those moments where it's crossed my mind. Um, but man, you know, when you're talking about the should, have you guys ever heard don't should all over yourself? <laughs> Isn't that so good? I don't like to shit on myself. <laughs> you know, you ha- Heather, you said, you know, this is unapologetically me. And so for me, as a Christian woman, I know that guilt does not come from my God. It is mm. not one of the fruits of the Spirit. And so I know that that guilt is not coming from anybody that I want in my life. And so, um. you know, I pray against it. I talk to my husband about it you know, for that kind of confirmation that, you know, this, it's fine, like, you know what I mean? And I remind myself that it's important to me and to my husband that my kids see me as more than just their mom. Like, I'm not just their mom. I'm Crystal. Mm -hmm. I'm a wife. I'm a daughter of God. Like, all of those things. And so for me, I just, um, in in the season that I'm in and the place that I've come to with my faith, just knowing that, you know, and who the heck ever made up mom guilt anyway? I know. <laughs> like I want to fight them, you know? <laughs> Jeez. I know. No, I know. Like, That's the thing is like, not... you know, as if we don't have enough things to worry about. Right? Just you moms, know, dads, everyone. Right. I could feel guilty men. about, men you know, in, going. Men invented it. <laughs> I could feel guilty about, you know, going to have dinner with D, right? Or I could say to myself, I'm going to be so happy, so fulfilled to reconnect with my best friend. My, you know, I'm going to feel energetic and joyful when I get home, which makes me a better mom. Mm-hmm. It makes me a better wife. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I, I think really we honestly... Should- from this point forward, then we can just make a make a vow, make a pact that we're just gonna yes. start eliminating mom guilt, and maybe it'll like yeah. catch on, you know. So yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. no more guilt like in this. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to talk about the pressure that parents face, and this is you know, moms, dads. This is this is all parents. Like, I have to tell y'all that I get stressed just looking at 
my friend's schedules, like you guys included, and your to-do lists or even you know, just hearing the conversations of like, we have this activity, we have this activity, then we have to go do this. And I have to bake for the school and I have this meeting and all kinds of things. And I mean, you know, I had a, I, I feel like I had a pretty intense corporate job for a while in my life <laughs> where I was supporting yeah. an executive. And there, there are sometimes where I look at that and I'm like, wow, like this is tough. And so my question is more around, you know, Crystal, you working out of the home, do you say, or would you say that you feel like more pressure to be involved? Because, because and I guess like what I'm thinking is, um, you know, kind of like what we were saying when like working remotely, working out of the home, like sometimes people don't really understand that, that you're working in that space. Mm -hmm. Like this, this is a job. And so, in my head, and I've totally made this up, so you can correct me if this isn't happening, but in my head, I see like, you know, other moms and in, in the school and stuff like reaching out and kind of thinking like, well, why can't you do this? Because you are at home, you know, does that happen? Um, <laughs> um, you know, I think that I used to put that pressure on myself and I went through a season where I, ha I thought like, well, I'm working from home, so because of that, I need to be doing all the things and all of that. And then I kind of came to a place where I was just like, honestly, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> like and wave the white flag. <laughs> just exhausted, not just like, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And I really came to this place where I realized like I'm in charge of what I let in and mm -hmm. I'm in charge of what's on my plate. And if, you know, doing all the things, makes me exhausted, then it doesn't go in line with what my priorities are to be, you know, a good Christian woman and an exceptional wife and an exceptional mom. And so I started removing things off my plate. And I do tell people, like, when people ask me, oh, can you do this or can you do that? It's like, you know, like, for example, I do go to the kids' school every now and then, but I'm not like the mom, the class mom. Because mm -hmm. I work. Yeah. I have to work. It's an, it's it's not optional. You know, I think about my income I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're okay. My income matters to yeah. us. And um, you know, so I definitely I do I do remember going through a season of feeling like that, but now I'm just like, no. And honestly, you know, one of the best books I ever read that I really think kind of started the trajectory of where I am now is The Best Yes by Lisa Turkhurst. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. Lainey, I think I got yeah. that for you. It was so good. And actually, my husband gave it to me forever ago. What book is it? And it the what? The, the Best Yes. Yeah, I just oh, actually, I have actually read her. I haven't you read that one. The, whatever I the pink one is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just read her anyway, like, it's not supposed to be this way. And that right, one was also really good. good. So I'll have to go back one. and read that one. But honestly... <laughs> There was so much freedom in the idea that, you know, sometimes I think that we forget that we're in charge of our, I wouldn't say we're in control, right? Because I'm a Christian. I know God has a plan for me, but I get to decide. Yeah. And if something isn't a good fit, you know, if something, you know, if I went to an office, I wouldn't get to, you know, do all the things. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, I, you know, that. Yeah, I was kind of going to ask, you know, D to that to that point, right? I D, okay, so Crystal, I had like my own vision of you, and then for Delaney, I picture the film Bad Moms, you know, so like Mila Kunis or whatever, you know, she works, and so, and then all these moms are like shunning her almost because she's working, and they're like, what? Like you're, you know, you're not going to come to the PTA meeting, and so, I mean, Delaney. Do you feel more pressure to be involved like as, as a parent than maybe you do from your own job or, you know, like, I mean, do you feel any sort of pressure on the other side of that of just like, okay, yeah, I, I am working full time. So no, I'm not going to be able to do all these extras with my kids. You know, I, uh, not yet because, you know, Parker is in preschool, so I can't really say 
that I do yet. Um, I, the only thing I could really speak to is that tip for that is that um, I, I, you know, like I sometimes, you know, struggle to find and you know Dan and I end up like tag team teaming on this and stuff like that is because of like like Christmas parties Valentine's Day parties Halloween parties um you know Parker's in preschool so she's starting to have those things kind of figuring out how we navigate that because being a teacher I have those same parties like I don't work in an office (laughs) building where um you know like and not to say that that's um makes it easier because I also think that probably makes it, you know, a whole nother bag of tricks to be like, Mm -hmm. well, I work in an office building, therefore I can't call out. So we have to figure out and navigate like ways to divide and conquer for that. And, um, but otherwise I don't, I don't yet, Mm -hmm. but also then in my mind, there's a big part of me. that's like, I need to teach at my kid's school so that I can be a part of everything. So there is maybe something in me that, you know, has definitely thought about how to make it possible so that I can do it all, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know if I can. <laughs> We're going to need more wine for that one. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because, yeah. So I think I'm, I'm I think that's a right, you know, I will have to like, we'll have to check back in a few years to see. <laughs> I'll make a note. Um, yeah, because well, right now, I think I, I, I think that I don't feel a whole lot of, you know, a lot of pressure. And I do, you know, I, a lot of the, I, I, a lot of my friends work. And so I'm also not like the only one who works. Mm-hmm. I think so, you know. Yeah, so I that helps. A lot of my friends are, are kind of jealous too of our schedule because, again, we get summers off and we get things like that that – that a lot of corporate people don't get. So I think that in some ways, again, my job does lend itself pretty well to doing more, being a part of more because of that. Right. I'm loving this conversation. Um, no, I am too. Yeah. So, okay, ladies, we are coming up on our time. And of course I could talk to you forever. And that's why you guys are my bestest friends. Um, but for our listeners, because they're probably like, okay, you girls just need to wrap it up, wrap it up. And I hear the babies in the back and I know we got dinner time going and everything else. One final question here is what advice do you have for our listeners? So this is moms, dads, stay at home, returning to the workforce, newly married, newly pregnant, or maybe even someone who's questioning whether or not kids are even in their life plan because of the kinds of scary decisions that they would have to make one day. So just think about advice for any of the listeners out there and go. (laughs) Do you want to go? God, no. I know. I just like to, I'll I'll buy you guys a little bit of time here. I like to, you know, at the end of the podcast, it's kind of like we can listen to everything, but at the end of it, it's like, all right, so what do I do? And so the whole thing that we've been saying is that for anyone listening, you know, maybe they're facing this, maybe they're not facing this. Maybe they're just, you know, listening to this because it's funny. Um, But for those who are listening, they're like, yeah, this is me. Like you're speaking to me. Um, What, what would you have to say for them? I honestly, (laughs) <laughs> and you both start at the same time. <laughs> All right, no, Crystal, where don't you go? go. <laughs> um, I feel like I would say pray about it, first of all. And I would definitely say sit down with, with your significant other and really talk about, like, what your goals are for your life and your lifestyle and what does it, you know, what does that look like? Because your thoughts might surprise you and might really help lead to your decision. And then I would also say, like, really, you know, think about what fulfills you. What is going to make you most proud at the end, you know, at the end of your time here on earth? What are you going to look back and be like, I'm so proud of this. I really felt fulfilled. I found joy. This is really who I was called to be. Because I think that you'll really find a lot of answers in that. And you might surprise yourself with, you know, thinking about those things because 
I think when you sit down and you kind of really are intentional about thinking through those things, the answer that I have found has come, you know, come, I don't want to say easier, but it comes a lot simpler mm. than, you know, trying to, I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, I That's definitely I'm do. I want to say, like, you know, I, I wish somebody would have wrong, told but... me. Yeah. You know, I wish somebody would have told me, like, what is going to make you happy? And honestly, like, really look at your season, you know, right. because what you do now, like, it's not a tattoo. It's not permanent, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And even tattoos aren't permanent anymore these days. So, <laughs> you know, Thank you, Jesus. Like, <laughs> Good, I got to get a couple what names I'm, removed. <laughs> right? What I'm going to get that one on my ass. <laughs> What I'm called to do right now might not be what I'm called to do in six months or a year or 10 years. Right. But I feel so strongly about where I'm at and what I'm doing right now that I feel, you know, very great about it. I feel amazing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have any doubt that I am doing what God has called me to do right now. Well, and I think something else that you've said is, and that is so important is recognizing like what, what does make you happy? And I, and actually I'm going to change that word. I'm going to say what brings you joy. And I know Crystal, you've mentioned this word a couple of different times. And I heard one time that, um, you know, there, there is a significant difference between happiness and then joy and happiness is, is a state, but it's a, um, it's a short, shortened state. You know, you can feel happy about many different things. I can be happy about a job promotion or I can be happy because I get reunited with friends or something along those lines. But that eventually that happiness wears off. But joy mm -hmm. is a constant state of being, you know, it's a present yeah. state. Yeah. And I think that um, I think that, that the big thing there is really just is asking that question of like, OK, what brings me joy? And again, to your point, with that recognition of. I am, I can be completely joyful in this season right now. And, yes. you know, and then the next season also be completely joyful. And it could be an entirely different season. And for entirely different totally. reasons, I'm joyful. So totally. I think I, I, I like that. Um, I like that advice of, you know, so say it again. So you said, pray about it, sit down and have the conversation with your significant other. Um, but then also just really, it's, it's an independent study, right? It's trying to figure out yeah, how, how am I being fulfilled um, yeah, and making sure that you're t taking that into, into your life and into your relationships. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Delaney? Yeah, I think it's, well, I think it's, you know, I think it's really important for people to breathe. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think that goes along with what Crystal was saying, just that, you know, not everything has to be right this minute and right this second. Um, and I think it's super important to make sure that, yeah, you're communicating with your partner. And I think it's important that you're communicating with the people around you. Um, you know, I really in the past year have found so much comfort in just the tribe of people that I have, um, and making sure that you're communicating with them, you know, and your partner about what you need and what, you know, fulfills you in making sure that you're clear with them, you know, about what you need and what fulfills you. Um, you know, because that's important. And again, mm -hmm. like we were talking about the mom guilt and stuff like that, that, you know, making, you know, when I have conversations with Dan, um, you know, we haven't been together that long, but we've changed so much and we have worn so many different hats and just making sure that we are talking about the things that we need, both mm -hmm. the things that we need from each other, the things that we need from ourselves, um, to make sure that we are the best people that we can be. Because right. if I'm not my best for myself, I'm not my best for him. I'm not my best for my kids. Um, I'm not my best for the people that I'm, you know, around. And so I think it, like you said, yes, it's an independent study. It's a partner study. It's a group study. Um, yeah. But I think it's really important just to relax, to just breathe and relax and, um, you know, and sometimes take, take comfort in a little bit of the unknown mm -hmm. and just saying like, I don't know. I yeah. I don't know where this is going. I don't know where I'm going to be. Um, but 
this is this is what's hap- this is what I where I'm at right now and being okay with that. Well, and I think yeah, that you hit that. on yeah, I think I think you hit on a big thing that we haven't really talked about here. What I heard when you were talking about with with Dan is that there's a little bit of grace that also needs to be offered, right? Because oh, as much as we lot. Yeah, as much as we are doing the independent study and trying to figure out things on our own and and you're saying, you know, the times where we have to um, give ourselves grace and say, I don't know. We also have to recognize on the other side of that is a partner, a husband that is saying, I don't know either. And, 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 you know, just how we were saying that like the three of us have like grown up together and we've been through a lot and we've learned a lot in the 15 years we've been friends, the same in our, you know, relationships, the romantic relationships is that you guys are growing together and you have to look at that, that, you know, he doesn't know it all either. And he's figuring it out just as much as you are. And he's figuring himself out just as much as you're figuring yourself out. Right. Right. And I think that that's okay. And I think it's important for us, for people to be flexible in their relationships and be flexible as moms and be flexible as dads and as friends and stuff like that. Because if we, if we're not going to be flexible, then ultimately we're going to lose those things. I mean, we have, we, you know, if, if we don't allow ourselves to be flexible with them, we potentially might lose things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Crystal, you reading- up a good point. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I think we have to be extremely careful not to put other people's expectations of what we should. There's that should word again. Mm-hmm. Of what our life should <laughs> look like. Right? Because I think that we right. really very easy to get tunnel vision and to really think like this is who the world says I need to be mm-hmm. and so that's who I need to be or even your family or your close friends like these I love that like she you know I've talked to her many times about what am I doing like this is where I'm at that kind of a thing and making sure that the people you do have in your tribe they don't put their expectations on you but rather they're supporting what you want, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I do. And in fact, I was going to say that, um, you know, for me, one of the the realizations that I had and, and when I wanted to do a podcast episode on this topic specifically is because um, – a lot of this is about, you know, changing your perspective or trying, or not necessarily changing it all the time, but just kind of hearing a new perspective. And I was recognizing in myself that I had a predisposition towards stay at home moms that I was, mm-hmm. that I had in my head, like, well, you know, just because I was thinking that, well, I would never be like that. And I can't believe, you know, like I said to you, Crystal, like, I can't believe you, you have a college degree. Like, what are you doing? Or, you know, Delaney and in your case, you know, so I just, I kind of had this, um, and I, I don't any anymore, but I'm just saying like in years past and leading up to this and everything, it was always like this kind of like a negative view towards that because I was thinking like, well, why does the, you know, why does the mom have to stay at home? And I just felt like, you know, I would see my friends get into these situations where, like I said, it was like, I almost had to protect them or something. And what I've come to realize is like, no, this is, this is their decision. This is what they want. And like you guys just said, instead of me like protecting you in that way, it's more of like a supporting you because this is your, this is your way. Well, you know, I think that that's a huge, I love that you bring that point up because I do think that there is a huge stigma around staying at home or we're working from home that like it's something we have to do Mm -hmm. and I I do not feel like I have to do this by any means I feel incredibly blessed that I get to choose to stay home because it is a choice Mm -hmm. you know and just I'm sure you know Delaney she feels I'm sure incredibly blessed that she gets to choose to go to work right outside of the home you know, yeah. but I do feel like there's a huge stigma that like it's like uh, people feel bad for us. You know, like if yeah, I, or you know, like, poor girl, you know, <laughs> or what like, I was honestly. And I feel like it comes from both sides because yeah. I feel like yeah, totally. it does come from both sides because I feel like there's I and I, again I, I'm not unapologetic, but like I think there are some women who work at home that are like, oh, poor her. 
just gotta go to work every day. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. know, and I think, yeah. and I'm sure within the stay at home mom community, it's like, oh, she has to work from home. I just stay home. <laughs> like, I'm sure that, like, and again, totally. of course, no one's ever gonna admit that, but I'm sure that there are those pockets of people that, like, right. And it's like, no, a, yeah. lot, of it, a lot of it is a choice, you know. You know. Man, right. I and that's like, if we like really as women just locked arms with each other and really said, you know, like what fits your family and your family's values and priorities and supported each other in whatever that looks like, I mean, we would change the world. <laughs> Crystal, I totally, I, I totally feel like Crystal, gosh. Crystal is a nine on the Enneagram. I just know it. She's a peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. What is your number? What is your number, Crystal? I don't know. I actually have been wanting to do that, but I've got time. You definitely should. But but no, but no. I I I do agree with you in this. Is that um, I and again, like this is me just being like just admitting my my own judgment that I was having and saying like now, you know, I don't want to say I feel guilty, guilty or anything, but I think I know, I know the air in my ways and just saying like, one, there should be no judgment, like absolutely not. But also just recognizing like, again, different strokes, like everybody has their own story and everybody has their own situation that works and it's nobody's business, right? Nobody else's business right. to go in and say what you should or should not be doing because should is no longer... <laughs> No no more the, more the funny part about it is the title of this episode is should I stay or should I go? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Got some double shoulds. Perfect. Well, thank I'm you really ladies. Honestly, like, I think I just have to say this. I feel like my biggest advice would just be like, stay in your own lane, figure out what works for your family and own it. Mm-hmm. You know, own your season. Yeah. Own your season. Yeah. You know? Crystal, I, I can just like picture you. <laughs> I can just like picture you right now, and you are just gonna be like walking away, doing your little <laughs> neck bob. Like, <laughs> I'm totally pacing in my office, like you know, <laughs> flinging my water bottle around like I'm preaching over here. <laughs> I love it. Ladies, I cannot thank you enough. This has been so much fun with y'all. I knew it was going to be, and I hope that everybody listening has had just as much fun as we have and at least takes away one thing (laughs) from from this time. But you guys are the best. Thank you. Thank Thank you, you, We love you. Anytime. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. How much fun are they? Um. Thanks again for listening. Like I said, I hope that you take away at least one thing from this conversation with Crystal and Delaney. I myself um, know that I learned a lot more about the type of partner I want to be, the type of parent I want to be, and the type of friend that I want to be, frankly, and the support I want to offer there. So definitely reconsidering my perspective on on many different elements here. Um, in particular, you know, I mentioned it a couple of times, one of the things that I am going to do differently is really not advocate so hard for something that I may want more than the other side. And so just really recognizing that in me and instead offering support for whatever it is that my friends or the people who are sharing that information with me, whatever they want. Um, so that that is something that I'm going to change. And, and really, again, just changing that whole idea that Um, you know, that it's the, the woman has to stay at home. Um, instead, you know, this is a, this is a choice and this is a decision that everyone has to make for themselves and deciding, I think Crystal said it best just a few moments ago, you know, really deciding what works best for your unit and owning that and going forward and not caring what anybody else thinks. (laughs) And I know that that is really hard in our society, but just really accepting this is our decision and, and we stand by it. 
And frankly, again, it's nobody else's business, um, including mine. <laughs> and that's and that's something that I'm absorbing right now is recognizing like that's while people may come to me for advice and and I can give it or whatever else. At the end of the day, I think what people are really asking for is support or just um, a listening ear. And and it's really. It's really none of my business what they ultimately end up deciding. So anyway, just some some things to think about for sure. And you know it's coming. I like to end every episode with a very important question. What are you going to do differently? Because that's life.